Keep your wits headed up and everything. Uh, yeah. All right, so that's our parabola, although the computer one is much prettier than what I just drew in there. So for our domain, and I would start the same way that I would, would have started last year when we talked domain and range. Since the domain are your x values, ask yourself first, can I just say that this goes to a negative infinity or not? Which means, does this graph continue to go left forever? Yeah, okay. So we can say that we do start at a negative infinity. And would this graph, clearly it's going up forever, but would we agree that it is going to be heading off to the right forever as well? Yeah. And since there's no gaps in here, there's no holes or whatever, we're going to hit every single x value along the x-axis that we could hit, negative infinity to a positive infinity. The range, however, now is the first one where we now have to kind of think a little bit. Because what I would again start with is, does this graph go down forever? So does this graph go down and down and down forever? No. So this is the first one where we're not going to be able to use an infinity to define our interval. So the question would then be, if we can't start go to a negative infinity, what is the smallest y value that this graph would hit? All right, Nora, what do you think? Nora? Uh, one. Good. We went right through here at a one. That's the smallest y value that we would hit. Does the graph go up forever? Yeah, so we can put an infinity here, and we know that this is a parentheses. So now for the first time, we have something that's not infinity. So now we need to talk, okay, is that a parentheses? Or we also sometimes used a bracket. What do we think? Is this going to be a parentheses or a bracket? Cam? A bracket. Good. Do you remember why, Cam? Because it's positive, right? Yeah, because it's positive or something like that. <laughs> I completely forgot everything. It doesn't necessarily have to be positive. But the, what we're just looking for is, does our graph actually hit the value of 1? Does it cross the y value of 1? Yeah. yeah. And because of that, that's why you're going to use a bracket. So the bracket is correct, and we're going to use a bracket to indicate that we actually hit the 1. The times you would use a parentheses, let's say I gave you that same exact graph, and let's say, remember how last year sometimes we'd have holes in our graph, and then this is still going to be a 1? Since we don't, I remember that. That, that looks familiar. yeah, so when we started dealing with holes, that's when a lot of times you start dealing with your parentheses, all right? But as long as we touch the graph, which we do here, we need to make sure that's a bracket, all right? Okay. Next one, an exponential graph. We should have an idea of what that looks like. I'll give it to you so you can then look at it. So if we just did 3 to the x, this should look exactly what an exponential graph you've been told looks like. So it starts out growing slowly here. It's slow, 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 slow. Then eventually an exponential graph takes off very quickly. Do the domain and range for this one. going to try to keep that there because I want you to see something with this one. All right, so before I write, let's do our domain, see if we got this. Does this appear our graph goes to the left forever? Yeah, so to start out the domain with a negative infinity, I would hope we could all get. Would it appear, even though it goes off the screen, would this appear that it's going to tend to go to the right forever even though we lose track of the screen? Yeah, okay, good. So starting to shake our heads. We're starting to get this a little bit. So this domain would also be a negative infinity to a positive infinity. Okay, so the same answer you got for part A, same answer you got for part B. The domain is still negative infinity to positive infinity. The 
the range now, I'd be very, very impressed if we got that range. Any brave souls out there? All right, Cam's a brave soul. What do you got, Cam? Um, zero comma infinity. All right, so Cam says uh, parentheses for what? Uh, over the infinity and the zero because it's not a one. Okay, so Cam said, uh, we all agree it was negative infinity to infinity for the domain. And then our range, so parentheses, zero, comma, infinity, like that? Yeah. All right, so let's pull this yeah. back up. All right. Well, Cam, you're a genius. All right. Wait, really? I was that is correct, 100% correct. That's really, really, oops, I can't touch that, otherwise I lose my camera, or my calculator. Good. If you got that, that's really good. Um Definitely goes to infinity. So I, uh, so hopefully we have that part of this. Definitely going to shoot up to a positive infinity here. So then the question was, he saw that it went under a 1. See how it's leveling off towards the x-axis here? That's your y value of 0. Now, what's your best guess is why this is a parentheses, Cam? Any thoughts? You told me a second ago that it has like hit the value of 1. Or something like that. It, it would have to hit the value of zero. So if this touches the x-axis, so it's hard on this calculator, this will never touch the x-axis. Okay, it's impossible. And if I show you the table, so let me show you the table here. Watch as I just go to a negative infinity. See how it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller? But it doesn't, and now it starts giving it to us in scientific notation because it's so small. But is that x value as our x's go further and further left, are we ever getting a y value of zero on this? No. So an exponential graph doesn't ever hit zero. So that's why this has to be a parentheses here. All right. You probably talked about that like five minutes last year, something that you would have mentioned, but didn't dive too much into that. All right. All right. Good, Cam. Oh, boy. All right, any questions with those? Hopefully this is coming back to us a little bit. This definitely gets into what we're gonna be doing in the rest of the notes here in a minute. Good. Okay, then, see what you think about number three. We talked about this yesterday. You had this for homework yesterday a little bit. Examine the graph to the right. You're given two functions. You have S, you have R, between just zero and one. Which graph is growing fastest between just the x value of 0 and the x value of 1? Using some similar logic that I explained this yesterday. And there's a couple different routes we could take, but I'm going to go with that route first. Do we agree they start at the exact same spot? So if they were racing, at the time of zero, they're in the same location. It's basically the start line. One second later, so after this one second, so over that one second span, would we agree that S has gone farther than R? So in that one second, if they started at the same spot, but S has gone farther, then S of X would have had to have been our faster growing function. Okay. The next one, I'm going to use that logic. Then we're also going to want to talk about something else here too. Between two and three. So now go between two and three. Now they don't start at the same spot. Notice how S is beating R. So S is higher up than R is right now. Let me do R in red. So S is winning at two seconds. If we go to three seconds, so now if I go to three, here is where I am at on the graph of S and the graph of R is now up here. 
So hopefully we can see that S was ahead at two seconds, but within that span of one second, this R graph ended up getting to a higher point than what S would have been. So in one second, wouldn't it have had to have been true that R then had to have been going faster? If it was a race, R was trailing, but by that end of one second, it had gone ahead. So with that logic there, R of X had to have been moving faster within that one second. <clears throat> okay. The other thought that you want to get into, if it's not quite this obvious, think about the slope of our graph. So we know what the slope of this one is. It's a straight line. It's always this slope. But notice when I get to right about here, would we agree if I kind of drew a line on this graph that this line is steeper than the line that's going to remain constant the whole time? So as that thing gets steeper and steeper and steeper, it's eventually going to be growing at a faster rate than the line that's going to maintain a constant value the whole time. <clears throat> All right. All of this stuff is going to play a role kind of in this little task that we're going to do and finish tomorrow is domain and range, which one's growing faster. Okay, all that good stuff. All right, so let's jump into that. We'll at least get part one done, hopefully. Okay, so as we go through this, it just talks about the story about the, the tortoise and the hare. The hare mocks the tortoise for being slow. The tortoise replies, slow and steady is going to win the race. And then they race each other. So we've all heard that story. You're then told the distance from the starting line of the hare is given by the distance equals t squared. So this is how fast our hare is going, the rabbit. So at any time, we can figure out his distance by taking our time and then squaring it. The tortoise, all right, so it says because the hare is so confident that he can beat the tortoise, he gives the tortoise a one meter head start, and we'll show what that means in a second. On the table anyway and then the tortoise's distance is given by 2 raised to the power of t so that's this here so all you're doing in number one and hopefully we can at least get through this maybe the first question fill in the table to show the distance of the tortoise and the hare at any given time so what i would do first let's do the hare first let's just fill in this table so the distance of the hare is always your time squared so if my time is zero, because here's our time in the table. So if I do a zero squared, his distance is zero, which makes sense. At the beginning, he's starting at no position. After one second, you're going to do one squared. So now he has traveled one. And then what unit did we get here? Uh, one meter. <clears throat> And then we just continue on down that table. Two squared would be four, three squared would be nine, 16, and so on and so forth. So I think we can all do that. So fill in that side. Okay, then you're gonna do the same thing on the right-hand side, <clears throat> except this time your distance is always two raised to the power of your time. So in this case, we would get two to the zero power. Write down what you think that is. Let's see if you remember this. <clears throat> And then if you don't believe what I'm going to say right here, throw it into your calculator and the calculator never lies to you. But if you recall, anything raised to the zero power mysteriously is a one. So two to the zero should be a one. <clears throat> That's why in the setup of the problem, it tells you that the hare gives the tortoise a one meter head start. So he starts at the beginning, he gives him a one meter head start at the time of zero. All right, continue on down the table. Two to the power of one would just be two. Two to the power of two is now a four. And again, all I'm doing is taking this expression here and raising it to whatever time we are at. So in this case, this case two cubed, 
So eight. Then you would do two to the power of four. So now we're just doing two times two times two times two, 16. And then you should be able to fill in this table, even if you don't know off the top of your head what like two to the seventh is. If we just look at our pattern off to the right here, aren't we dealing with an exponential function? We can just continue on with that pattern without having to do like two to the ninth. The two to the ninth off the top of your head, you probably don't know. But we do know we're just multiplying by two every time. So 32, 64, all the way on down. All right, so finish that side off. Then from there, once we have all this filled out, actually I might be able to do this because this is a pretty quick little problem. Now that we have all that data in the table, I'll give you two minutes of silence. Answer, answer one through four. So just go one through four, see what we come up with. <clears throat> Okay, give about 30 more seconds. Don't overthink it. I think you can get all these. Number two, I'm going to pick um, Irini. What did you get for number two, Irini? At what time does the hare catch up to the tortoise? <clears throat> um, I put two. Good. Oops. At the time of two, and I think we were measured in seconds. Initially, you know, one to zero, two to one, the tortoise is ahead, but we can see at this time right here, they're tied. So after two seconds, the rabbit catches up to the tortoise. Good. Three, uh, Gavin, if the racehorse is very long, who wins, the tortoise or the hare? <clears throat> um, the tortoise. All right. And why did you say that? Because uh, by the end, the, the seconds were all the way up already. Say that one more time now. For the tortoise. Say that one more time. I didn't catch all that. 
uh, the time it took, the time of seconds uh, for the distance was way higher for the tortoise than the hare was. Okay. But let's say this, let's say the distance was way higher, because I think you're looking at these values over here, right? Mm -hmm. These are our distances. So we would have traveled 32, 25, 28. So basically what he's saying is the distances are far greater. As our time continues, as our race continues, something along those lines. It's pretty clear that the uh, tortoise is pulling away from our rabbit. <clears throat> and then four, let's go. Um, Rebecca, at uh, what time or times are they tied? Um, I said two and four. Good. So two seconds we had already identified. But if we come up here to 4, they're also at the same place at 16. So we would say at t equals 2, and then at t equals 16 seconds. Okay? So what you want to get out of this, and we'll, we'll wrap this up tomorrow. Last year, you would have dealt a lot with linear versus exponential. And you would have done tasks and everything. You know what? We'll hit on it tomorrow. That's the bell. We'll get you out of here. Uh, we'll give us something to talk about while we talk about that and finish off the rest of these problems. So no homework tonight. We'll finish this. You'll get some homework for tomorrow night, but tonight you're free. Um, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Have a good rest of the day. See you guys. Okay, everybody. I'm going to start calling on all the people who don't have their cameras on saying that they don't work because I'm not buying it. Yeah. All these cameras can't be broken. No. <laughs>